<laughs> good morning, afternoon, or evening, good more after eve, wherever it is, wherever you are. Hope you're having a good one. Today I'd like to look at the topic of uh, two giant influencers, uh, Jordan Peterson and Rolo Tomasi and their views on Jung, because their views on Carl Jung are very different. <laughs> Let's get into it. If you look at what Jordan Peterson has to say about Carl Jung, as he describes Carl Jung as a genius, a genius to the point where it's scary. <laughs> Whereas Rolo Tomasi, on the other hand, dismisses Jung at every turn, every opportunity he gets. In fact, in his book, The Rational Male, he basically curses Jung. He curses, says, I curse your cold, dead heart, or words to that effect, which was quite, you know, in a book called The Rational Male, I thought, well, that's not rational, whatever that is. <laughs> it's not a rational comment. So, Roald Tomasi obviously has some visceral reaction against Carl Jung. Anything I say um, about, against Roald Tomasi's views on Jung are not in any ways to be meant to be disrespectful of Roald Tomasi because seeing the comments in his videos, he gets masses of feedback of saying, this man saved my life, who, who saved me from suicide. So there's masses of positive comments on uh, Roald Tomasi's videos from men who has, he has really helped. So it doesn't take anything away from all the good he's doing. But I just don't go along with what he says about Jung. I'm going to be taking the side and the perspective of Jordan Peterson on Carl Jung much more than Rollo Tomasi because Jung has had a deep impact in many people, millions and millions of people, and continues to do so and is actually has a growing influence in the modern world. You may well know that Jung coined the terms introvert and extrovert, which is pretty much in common speech, common language. He didn't come up with the term archetypes. He credits that to Plato, but he, he made the idea of archetypes accessible to modern people. Not only that, even in the men's community, there are, there are leaders in the men's community who use Jung's model of archetypes like king, magician, warrior, and who work with those kind of archetypes in their men's work. And uh, Jung was a, had a profound influence in many people who then went on to influence modern culture quite a bit. For example, Jung influenced Star Wars indirectly through Joseph Campbell, who was influenced by Jung. And then George Lucas was very influenced by Joseph Campbell. So it's like there's a, a lot of that going on in our modern world. And Jung's presentation of, of shadow work, shadow work is a, a growing thing for many people. Many people are looking at shadow work and doing shadow work on themselves. And not all of them know that came from Jung, but a lot of them do realize that's actually where it came from. So Jung has had a profound and deep influence in, in many people. But the problem is a problem from a perspective of modern psychology. But modern psychology is trying to prove itself as being rational and scientific based. And that's all very well, but if you're trying to bring in aspects that are, of life that are beyond the rational, such as the soul, the spirit, spirituality, seeing human beings as evolving beyond the animal and not just subject to the biological imperative, I think what's happened is that in some ways having a founder of psychology like Jung who actually was a psychologist. Psychology means the study of the soul. But modern psychology is trying to throw out the soul <laughs> and, start, and reduce human beings to a very materialistic, animalistic perspective. So we're like we're a higher form of animal is how they see us. And I've met some psychologists who are horrified with the direction modern psychology is taking and it's become a way of selling people stuff. A lot of psychologists in advertising and marketing and sales and to try and convince people to buy various products that are supposed to make them happy. And when those products ultimately fail to make people happy and the lifestyle that's being sold ultimately fails to make the person happy, then it, those people can be then be treated by another group of psychologists who actually are supposed to provide the cure <laughs> for depression, their anxiety, their stress and all of that. So modern psychology has, to some extent, become part of the problem. It's become embedded in materialism and a very limited view of, of human beings. So modern psychology is not actually psychology. There's no soul in it. They've thrown the soul out. <clears throat> so in a way, this is what's represented in Rolo Tomasi and Jordan Peterson, because 
Joel Tomasi is presenting the purely rational approach to psychology, whereas um, Jordan Peterson bridges the two worlds. He he has a he takes a very scientific approach to his background research, which is excellent. There's that really you know more power to him, and and also he he realizes that there's more going on in a human being than just being a biological being a bit of form of higher animal, and that there's something deeper going on. And I, I think that partly that's Jordan Peterson's dilemma and his struggle in life. Jordan Peterson has a similar struggle to what Jung had, which is trying to merge these two perspectives on life. One is rational, materialistic, and the other was more deeply spiritual, potentially even mystical. Uh, it goes beyond reason. I, I think of it as irrational. Irrational is below reason. Irrational is above reason. And I think that that's what um, people like Jung and, and Jordan Peterson wrestle with. I mean, the, 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 so Jordan Peterson is working through modern psychology, but he's, he's bigger than that. He's much bigger than that in his, his approach to life. And he probably struggles quite a bit so that, he, so that he doesn't get too far out and lose credibility amongst the people he's trying to reach. I think that's the real problem with people in the manosphere. And there's quite a few of them who keep dissing Jung and blaming him for things that are not Jung's fault. Because Jung actually didn't direct his teachings, generally speaking, to, to the public. If you read any of, any of his material, you soon find this is dense stuff. And it's the people who then pick up in his material, then presented it to the public. And some distorted it, and some made it suit their own purposes, and some, uh, like some in modern psychology, are embarrassed by it and just don't want to deal with it. So the thing is, is that Jung's methodologies his insights and his material is becoming more accessible, is becoming understood better by the new emerging generation of people coming in and they get it and they go, okay, I can work with this. I can use that idea. I can see how that works for me. And they start working with it. So modern psychology has a problem because <laughs> Jung's stuff works and it works for many people, but they're trying to disown the guy <laughs> and say he was woo woo, you know. <laughs> and dismissing him as that, but he was a lot more than that. In fact, I was heavily influenced by Carl Jung because maybe late teens, uh, early 20s, I had two heroes in my life. One was Carl Jung and the other was Jimi Hendrix, which is not really relevant to this discussion. But I was so impressed when I read Carl Jung's biography, Memories, Dreams and Reflections, that it shaped a lot of my thinking and understanding of life from thereafter. And partly it was because I was so impressed by Carl Jung and his courage facing his inner life and what was going on inside him and his willingness and ability to describe his inner, his inner life, his inner process and the relationship to what was going on inside, outside of him in his outer life. And also his willingness to, to, to get into areas which other people might think of as really weird and dismiss, have trouble <laughs> accepting and he knew that I got the impression he knew that was the case but he felt his mission was to be really honest with what was going on with him and where it took him and the results and effect it had in his life and again and again was amazed by the man's courage and how he faced himself and how he faced his challenges in life and the number of times where he could have taken a prestigious path that would have made him do well in the eyes of the world, but it didn't fit with his own inner core self. And he chose to take his own path. And he, he did that a number of times. For example, when he, was, he had a chance to be a, a medical doctor and was even mentored by a, a really well-known doctor. But he let go of the opportunity to, dis, to, to get into psychology and psychotherapy when it was a, considered not very respectable <laughs> certainly not well established field and he chose to go that way and people thought he was nuts doing that and the time came when he he broke away from Freud and he could have done very well just as being a disciple of Freud in those days again he chose his own way he chose his own path but very worried about his own future prospects because of it he thought it could well be the ruin of him any future prospects to break away from Freud, but he did it anyway. Many times Jung showed real courage and willingness to 
face situations so, so, and also just the way he describes his inner processes and how he dealt with issues coming up really helped me in my own inner journey and how I handled things coming up. So I'm a bit defensive of Jung. I'm always aware of everybody has their quirks and the, where they don't have their act together. And it's just, I'm not starry-eyed about Jung, but I've had massive benefits from him. Raul Tomasi seems to blame Jung for the feminization of, of men and boys. And that comes from members of the, shall we say, opposite gender, completely misrepresenting Jung and what he said. And also it comes from a cultural thing where there's many influences that cause people to consider that there's male and female aspects to every individual. Let's take the bigger picture first, then we can get into some of the specifics. Now, many religions, philosophies, points of view, what have you, consider that life has a polarity, there's a duality. It's good, bad, up, down, left, right, hot, cold, good and evil. There's many polarities that we deal with in the, in the process of life different ways of describing that. Some cultures describe it as yin and yang, some describe it as uh, Shakti and Shiva, some describe it as a divine masculine and divine feminine, and so on. There's different ways of looking at polarities within life and within human nature. Jung tended to use the term introverted and extroverted, and uh, but where the misunderstanding comes about Jung, or one of the misunderstandings is of use of the term anima. And superficially, very superficially, it can look like Jung is saying there's a feminine aspect within every man and a male aspect within every female. And there's some of a truth in that, but it's much more nuanced than that. And for example, um, he, when Jung talks about the anima within a male, he describes it as an aspect of the psyche, the soul, the deeper, wiser, aspect of that person appearing to them uh, within their consciousness and then taking on a female form, it, or rather taking on a female aspect. It appears as the other, it appears as the other polarity to the individual. The psyche embodies all energies, all potentials, where you describe it as masculine, feminine, uh, yin, yang, Jack Dean, Shiva, whatever polarities you use to describe it, because it's the whole self, it's the all capacities and abilities in a sense embodied in one. And it usually appears as the other. So basically it's the soul, it's the soul in a sense presenting itself to the individual. And for whatever reason it tends to do that through the polar opposite of what individual mostly is. Of the core self as masculine and it appears as feminine, of the core self as feminine, then it appears as, as masculine. So that's a very different thing from saying there's a woman inside a man. And also because there's many cultures have had this view that there's, there's this polarity in human beings. And it's not fair to say that Jung is responsible for all of that. A lot of New Age stuff picks up in the yin yang and the Shakti Shiva and all of this kind of stuff. So there's a whole cultural influence to look at the polarities within human nature because there's a whole cultural influence for thousands and thousands of years to see life and human beings from a perspective of what are the polar opposites that are at play in that life situation, in that society, or in that individual. So let's come to some specifics of what Rolo Tomasi says. For example, raises an issue, and I think it's a valid, very valid issue that he's raising, that you might hear a six-year-old girl say to a six-year-old boy, oh, you need to get in touch with your feminine side. That's a complete misunderstanding. For one thing, Jung, I doubt, would ever say that. <laughs> You don't conflate an archetypal energy like an anima and a female. It's a very different thing from that. That's a misunderstanding of it. And for one thing, he would say that's not true. I would suspect Jung would say that's actually not true. What that young man needs to do is to integrate his masculine more fully. Then, then and only then, maybe he'd be in some kind of position to having a sufficiently integrated personality or a sufficiently individuated personality, as Jung would probably call it, to be able to handle the energy from the anima. So I think Jung would agree with Roald Tomasi that's actually really damaging to young men to actually take that approach. You're trying to get them to deal with something that they're, they're just not ready to deal with. And on the other side of it is you could argue that if the young boy is exhibiting masculine energy in a, in a distorted, out of balance way, what it may, may be he needs to learn to cultivate and develop 
the protecting and providing aspect of his masculine and to integrate that into himself and that would help him balance and the providing protective aspect of masculine is a masculine energy it's not a feminine energy it's a clearly masculine energy and many men who are out of balance or many males who are out of balance with their energy are caught up in the, the, the primary aspect of the martial one. There's a sense of purpose, of direction and action and going ahead and, and they just live off of that and uh, they've got too much of that and they don't have enough of the protecting, providing aspect to balance that. Then their behavior is out of balance and they're one-sided in their behavior and that comes across. And people think that, oh, they're too masculine. No, they're not enough masculine. They don't have enough of the other masculine characteristics to balance themselves because there's not enough information and ideas around what healthy masculinity looks like. So they assume that the only alternative to actually the purposeful driven aspect of the masculine, they assume the only alternative is the feminine. It's not. <laughs> we need the, the protecting and providing energy to become balanced as men. And the other energy we need is the intelligent, creative energy of the masculine, and it's those three together that helps to balance the male energy. So what young men need is to be introduced to ideas and aspects that are healthy masculine, and then once they've balanced themselves, once they've integrated some of these other aspects of the masculine, then, and only then, they can begin to look at the anima. But it's not simplistically seeing it in terms of a, an inner feminine, it might bring those qualities, it might bring something else. Because it's an inner guide, it's regarded by Jung as an inner guide, and it takes quite a level of maturity or a, within, and development within an individual before they're at the point where they can handle an anima type energy coming into them and learn to integrate it. They have to be a pretty well integrated male to really begin to handle that. It might come up at some point in their life before they're ready, Generally speaking, in order for somebody to do it deliberately, they need to balance them. They need to have created a good, healthy male core of a mature male energy before they try and integrate anima energy. Before there would be any understanding of what anima energy is, they need to know their masculine energy because that's what's most readily available to them if that's in their core. And I'm not talking about the type of body the person happens to inhabit. If the core energy is masculine, that ought to be the first priority, to, to balance and integrate that. So there's, there's a, there's, in a sense, there's a lot of truth in what Rolo Tomasi's criticism of Jung, but it's not because Jung said that, it's what other people are distorting Jung's information as being and misrepresenting it. So what Rolo Tomasi, to my mind, is that reacting to is a, a real misrepresentation of Jung and what he stood for. And uh, Jung would agree with a lot of what Rolo Tomasi says against the way Jung's material is being uh, distorted and uh, presented. So in a way, I kind of also agree with some of what Rolo Tomasi is saying, that he's right to react against those views. But they're not Jung's views. <laughs> they're people distorting Jung's views. You could argue that the you know, this protecting and providing aspect of masculine energy, you could say it could be seen as um, an expression of feminine qualities by a man. In other words, you could, you could argue that the protecting and providing is a manly expression of aspects of feminine energy. It just depends on your definitions. The danger of that kind of definition is that it could make the man tempted to look to women for clues and cues as to how to express himself, how to express that that energy that's being defined as feminine energy. However, if a man, someone with masculine core energy, looks to emulate women for how to express himself, he's, he's in a danger of becoming a caricature of a woman in that aspect of his life. He really has to look to other males to find out how males express their softer side, if you like, not to look to women for that. Otherwise, it, it distorts his development. A man looking too much to women such as his mother or sisters or whatever, close female friends, as a reference point for who he is and who he should become, is less likely to develop the expression of healthy masculine qualities. Since, and since his core energy is masculine, that can seriously thwart his development. And uh, similarly, if a woman, someone with feminine core energy, tries to learn how to express masculine energy from men, she's also in danger. She's in danger of becoming a caricature of a man in that aspect of her life. So in, in each of these types of people who 
partially become a caricatures of the other gender can go through life wondering why the other gender is not attracted to them and why they can't find a sexual partner or a marriage partner. And it's partly, it could be partly because they've weakened their character, they've disintegrated their character rather than integrated it by taking on characteristics and behaviours not suited to their core energy, they've weakened how they present themselves to others in terms of how they come across in their core gender. Now if the person's really strong in their core gender then they can take the risk of uh, bringing in opposite qualities because they've got a core sense of self to integrate that into. But if they bypass that development stage and go straight to trying to bring in qualities of other other gender in, in the wrong way, they can end up overly identifying with the other gender and trying to be, unconsciously they're trying to become the other gender. That tends to make them kind of one-sided in some aspects of the development with all the unfortunate consequences of that. Anyway, this is a deep topic, so I'll just, but I'll just leave it at that for now. Jung is offering people tools and techniques for self-transformation, for self-awareness, for self-empowerment. And that's what we really need now. What we don't need is people misunderstanding material and then dis dissing Jung because of other people who misunderstand the material and misapply it. It's, it's really important, I think, that uh, people at least be open to what Jung offers. And if they can benefit from it, great. If they decide it's not their thing, great. But at least then they've had a chance to, to have a look at it. All I can say is I myself have benefited a lot, massively, from the stuff I've learned about Jung. It's not always easy stuff to get your head around. Uh, maybe I should do some videos on Jung and some of his views and uh, try and you know, present his stuff in kind of more mainstream kind of ways. Anyway, let me know if that would be useful. So please let me know your comments about this. Um, have you got something from you from Carl Jung and his work? Has it benefited you? What are your views? What's your experience? Have you come across some anti-Jung material in the manosphere? Did it put you off or did you just go your own way and look at it anyway if it interests you? So let me know what you think and take care. Be you. Be your best. Be your best self. You're awesome. Go for it.